Hello everyone, you're watching Let's Talk About Prepping. I'm Tyler, your host, and in this video, I want to talk about some of the basics of heat energy. In a recent video, I was talking about how heat preps will be some of your most important preps if you live in cold weather. And I want to talk about how all the heat production in the world won't help you if you're inefficient with your heat energy. Now, I've lived in the cold weather for a good chunk of my life, and I've noticed that a lot of people have some pretty cavalier attitudes when it comes to their heat energy, and they can be pretty inefficient with it without caring. But we can get around this with a basic understanding of the science of heat energy transfer. Heat energy is transferred in three different ways. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction occurs when heat is transferred directly between two particles. A good example of this is your pan on your stove. The stove heats the bottom of the pan, and the molecules inside the pan transfer the heat from the bottom into the handle. This is why we insulate the handles of our pans, so that the heat energy in the handle doesn't get conducted into our flesh. Now, heat energy can be conducted into a fluid, and that's a gas or a liquid, like air or water. And when fluids are heated, they expand and become less dense. And less dense things float uh, when compared to more dense things. So when the water in the bottom of a pan is heated, it rises to the top through the other cool water, all the while conducting its heat energy into the cooler water molecules around it. The cooler water molecules sink to the bottom and are heated and then in turn rise, conducting their energy as they convect up through the rest of the fluid. So these are the two basic ways that heat energy is usually transferred in a closed air space. We have our object that we're heating things with and it is conducting energy into the air, which is then convected around and conducted into us or the walls, or the roof, and then the air outside. This is why we insulate our living spaces to slow the rate at which the heat is conducted and convected out of our living space. But there's another way that heat energy is transferred that sometimes gets ignored, and that's thermal radiation, or infrared. Thermal radiation is different from the other types of heat transfer because the other types of transfer happen between particles which are directly transferring the energy between each other. Thermal radiation works somewhat like a light source. In fact, very much so. Visible light is just on a different part of the same electromagnetic spectrum as thermal or infrared radiation. Both travel through the vacuum between particles and are mostly unaffected by the lighter molecules like air. Although there is some interaction and light and infrared energy do heat air molecules up a certain amount, but their strongest effect is on solid molecules as we perceive them, like our bodies or furniture or walls. A good example of this is a wood stove. A wood stove uses combustion inside of the chamber to heat the walls of the stove. Now, most of the heat energy of the combustion is lost through the stovepipe as it travels directly outside. And good systems reclaim a lot of this heat by using a conduction blower and air convection. And conduction and convection are a good chunk of how the heat from a stove gets into the air of a living space. The hot surface of the stove conducts heat energy directly into the air around it and that air convects away from it, or is blown using a fan, which does increase the rate at which the heat can conduct off of a stove. But stoves also conduct a whole lot of infrared energy. Think of this like the red uh, thermal lamps in a chicken coop, or sometimes the heat lamps in bathrooms. These produce so much infrared energy that it is tangible on your flesh. This is like the sun baking you, but the air being cold. A really good example of this is having a hot wood stove in a room with all the doors and windows open to the freezing air outside. 
even though all of the hot air coming off of the stove is being whisked right away by the cold air from outside, the side of you that is still facing the stove can become unbearably warm because it's within line of sight of the black wooden stove, the black wood stove, which is itself essentially a light bulb for infrared energy. So this gives a good example of how we can think of the different types of heat energy and brings us to something that I was talking about with my mother the other day. The little Facebook hack of putting a clay pot over tea light candles to increase their heat efficiency. Now at first thought this might seem like a little bit of a hoax hack because you don't really increase the heat energy coming from the candle itself. But if done right, this can increase the efficiency of a lot of heat sources. A candle simply uses combustion to pour heat energy mostly directly upwards in the form of convection. That hot air flows up to the ceiling, conducts its heat into the roof, which is then mostly lost into the air outside. By putting the clay pot or some other intermediate material between the candle and the roof, that hot air conducts its energy into the clay, which then radiates a chunk of it sideways rather than straight upwards, radiating it directly into you or the walls or things besides just the roof. And in this way, you can see that these kinds of tricks actually do save quite a bit of energy. So this is where things like having a large rock next to your stove or on top of it or a bunch of anvils or things like that can really be efficient ways to store your heat energy in them and radiate them back out as the fire dies down and the stove itself cools. Or how using things like chicken lamps and other thermal uh, low energy light sources can greatly stretch your electricity resources rather than using implements that require both the heating of an element and the conduction of air using a fan, which also requires an electricity source. So hopefully these were some good thoughts and get some people thinking at a very basic and scientific level about some things that I know a lot of us really just sort of think of at the surface level. I need insulation, I need warm clothes, doesn't really matter why. But it does, and there are some very simple things that we can do which will aggregate into large energy savings for us. And energy savings are very important when we're talking about producing heat for ourselves over long periods of time with as little input as possible. So thanks for sticking around with this chat. Share some of your comments down below and keep thinking about things in a scientific way to help increase your productivity. Stay safe out there, everyone.